Alright, so today I have these parts to uh, build a 8088 PC. So I guess I'll get to solder. Alright, we'll do a quick unboxing here. I've already opened these up a little bit just to make sure I have everything. But here's some sockets. Here's the uh, CPU and uh, keyboard controller. ISA slots. Um, I think these are... I don't remember. They're one of the chips that it needs if it's like a programmable interrupt controller or something. And then here's what the uh, hard drive is going to be. It's a uh, CH375 or 376, I think. Um, it's just a USB to. Uh, I don't know what interface this is, but it must be parallel of some kind. Um, some zero insertion force sockets. And then some various logic chips. And all of these parts from Mouser Electronics. And this uh, button. Okay, there's one box. I'm going to have to blur that out, but this should be all of the boards. So this is the RAM and ROM board. This would be the uh, backplane slash motherboard. Oh, and also inside here is the uh, CPU card too. That should be everything. I'm waiting on a few extra parts, so this won't be done in this video, but we can just get started with the, the back plane here. So this design is open source, and it's by EMM computers. I think the guy's name is uh, Elijah Miller. You can see there. So there's his website. And then we have RAM and ROM board. And CPU board. This will take either an 8088 or a uh, V20, which is what I have. Which is what I'm going to be using. So, I guess we'll go ahead and start up the uh, soldering iron. While that's heating up, we'll go ahead and open this bag. So here we have some resistors. These are 510 ohm. This is... Mm, oh, this, this is a socket. This is the uh, PC speaker. Here's some more resistors. I'm uh, not sure what this is. Oh, this must be another IC encoders and decoders. Here, I think, is another socket. Yeah, that's a socket also. And this is 
some static RAM. Here's some more sockets. Here's another chip. Flip flop. This is a couple switches. Um, some buttons. I think this is the reset button. I ordered some extra just in case. And here are some uh, resistor arrays. I think there's two different types. And then this is a uh, crystal. This is the 14 megahertz crystal. So that's going to be for the ISA bus, I think. Here's some slot covers. Uh, it doesn't look like it comes with screws, so I'm going to have to figure something out for that. But I'm not putting this directly in a case right now, so I'll, I'll figure that out later. Here's some more encoders and decoders. Yep. And here's some more resistors, 27 ohm. And then here's the resistor array. And this is some more static RAM. This is the ATX connector. Here is the uh, 24 megahertz crystal. That is going to be for the CPU. And then here is a uh, DIN connector for the PS2 keyboard. One singular resistor. Which 33 ohm. Then we have a whole bunch of capacitors. And one last thing here. What are they? This one's speed up some more encoders and decoders. Yep. So that's all that's in my uh, mouse order. I have. I don't know if it's just one more chip left to get before I have everything and I also have to get a video card so so I guess we'll uh, go ahead and get solder in here so we can start <laughs> with the resistors probably would be the best choice it's close to the board try and zoom in Get started with capacitors and resistors. We're not going to be in these big ones. That's pretty close to the board, too. So that's the crystal, resistor array, and more resistors, and a button. And the crystal. I'll just move through here. Let's see. Which one is this? This is 33 ohm resistor. Let's see, where is that at? Not on that board. I think it might be. Um, yep, right there. Okay. Yep, 33 ohm. I don't have the color codes memorized, so I'm just gonna go with what this package says. So hopefully it's the correct one.
Okay, now we're just going to bend these over. Hopefully you can see that. How did this not start cleaning up? Oh, I think it went to sleep. I'm using this uh, new soldering iron. I might have posted the video about this, I don't remember. Well, I don't know as of this time, because I have not edited that video yet. So, let's get our solder in here. Just go ahead. Double check that joint, make sure it's good. Then I'm gonna snip the leads off. Yep, that looks pretty good. A little bit of blob of solder there, but. These ones are the 27 ohm. So let's see here, where's the 27 ohm at? There's two there, two more there. There's five of them, so let's see. Okay, I got all those soldered on. Now we're gonna do the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors. I'll just be back when I'm done with it. Alright, I've got them put in the board, I haven't soldered them yet. But I have two left over, and I was wondering why I have two left over. I uh, took into consideration um, one extra card that was not included in the PCB kit. Um, and that's the uh, DMA card. I'm going to have to order that, but uh, I do not have that right now. So that's why I have these two extra 10 kilo ohm resistors. So I'm going to get two soldering beads. I would like to point out that uh, I'm not the best at soldering. I'm pretty new at it. Um, so I am going to have to get some solder wick and clean up that one joint because a big blob of solder came out on that one. I'll be back when I get back around here. I guess I'm not necessarily new at soldering, just like I'm not that experienced at it. Because I've been soldering for, for a couple of years, but I haven't had that many projects. This project is probably the biggest project I've done so far. Um, a couple years ago, I soldered together a radio. That was a pretty cool project. 
probably similar, maybe less soldering than this project. I have a lot of extra solder on my tip, which is blobbing everywhere. But okay, we're gonna see if I can get that off. If I need solder quick. It looks a little messy, but I think I got everything. Sorry if uh, this board was a little bit out of frame. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get the next component in, which would be the 510 ohm resistors. And then I'll come back when I'm soldering it. Alright, the 510 ohm resistors inserted into the board, now I'm just going to solder them in. ones. Move my hand over the way it's soldering on so I don't bring myself. Alright. This board doesn't need any resistors anymore. And this board does not require resistors. Uh, I figure I probably should show you the front just so you can see how it's coming along. And I'll solder these ones in. I have those ones, so I just need this resistor over here. real quick. I'll show you the front because I don't think I did after last update. I think that's all the resistors except for the resistor array, so that's what the board looks like afterward. So now, now I think I'll put the sockets in. I'll be back after I get them inserted and I'm ready to solder them. Alright, I've got those set in there. Um, don't have them taped down or anything, so this is going to be. There we go. Get some tape. I don't have any masking tape or anything, so we're going to have to go with uh, electrical tape. This is probably not a good idea, but. We're going to do it anyway, and hope it doesn't mess it up. I just need to make sure they don't fall off when I flip it over, so... Now we're going to 
flip it over and hope nothing falls out. solder all those pins on. I think that's the sockets on this board done, except for the PLCC socket that goes there. But That's what it looks like so far, and then we're just going to do the sockets on the boards over here. You might not be able to see it. Um, and then I think I might have to call it for tonight. So I'm just going to do those real quick. Put this off to the side somewhere. You might have seen halfway through, but one of these sockets. I didn't quite get flat. I think it might have been that socket. I didn't quite get it flat for soldering so the the pins weren't quite sticking all the way up. So hopefully that's fine. It seemed like it all got soldered, so I'm just gonna find correct sockets for these and you want to make sure that uh, there's like a little notch on the board match that up with the notch on the socket but this is the uh, wrong size hope I focus that correctly. Let's see, is this the correct size? No. So I need to dig into my other my other socket uh, box here. sure that these are the correct size. Not sure if that's in focus or not. Probably not. Okay. Yep, that's the correct size. So now we're just going to flip these, this around the correct way. This is the RAM and ROM board. Okay. Now I'm just going to use this tape from before to make sure this is down flat.
I don't know if you can see that well or not, but we have this board complete. Well, not complete, just the sockets are gone, but. have these sockets. Now this board, well, I'm just going to do the IC sockets because there's also these bigger dip sockets um, for like some other chips in the CPU. And I'd have to dig those out. So I'm going to just do these ones, and then I think that'll be it for tonight. So we'll just pick one of these out, see if it's the right size. It is not. That is the correct size. Brick size for this one. Yep. Let me make sure these are the right way around. That one's the right way around. Great size. Alright, that should be everything, for now at least. I don't know if I'm going to uh, turn the rest of this project into another part, or just continue on. Probably better to turn it into a different part, it depends on um, how long this footage is. I know I have been down here for about an hour, so this is probably enough for one video. So join me next time when uh, we finish this project up, hopefully, with uh, the rest of the sockets, along with. Uh, ISA slots and the capacitors and some of the uh, resistor arrays. This is how far we got on the back plane. This is how far we got on the uh, CPU board. This is how far we got on the RAM and ROM board. So. We will hopefully be finishing this up in the next part.